We may not always have the internet to refer to, especially in a crisis situation. Today we're talking with Nick Miller about reference books that might be good for your library, especially for the basic getting started prepper. And Nick is a powerful resource for us because he is not only an emergency responder, he is a professor and he's the teacher of all this. So today in this video, we're going to let Nick share with you what his top picks are for the beginning prepper. And then we're going to share with you ours. Hey, Proud of Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And we are excited because we have Nick Miller back. And for those of you that have watched a couple of his last presentations, they are awesome. If you didn't, I'll leave a link to both of them and you can go and you can watch them. But the one that we, we just did recently was on basic automotive um, car safety kits. And that one was super good. And we're making all kinds of changes because of the information that we got from Nick, because he is an expert of experts. So I'm going to let Nick introduce himself. And then today we are going to move into what we feel are some of the most valuable books and resources that you can have in your prepper library. So Nick, tell us about yourself. So if you don't know me, I'm Nick Miller. I'm a longtime paramedic and paramedic instructor. Um, I also have a degree in emergency management, so I've kind of dabbled in the emergency sector for too long, looking forward to retirement. This uh, topic on books kind of came about because uh, the, some of the questions from the first video we did, one of them had a really good question. How does someone new, what books should we get as a new person to learn? And I thought, well, that was a good question. Prepping books aren't like textbooks that are peer reviewed and there and there's various levels of expertise. You know, the books I might be attracted to are someone who's brand new. So I thought, what would be some good ones in my library? And one point I want to make right here is, you know, we often, we are very spoiled in the world that we live in because we can look up stuff online. Now, it may not always be the right stuff. It may be totally false, but we have the ability to go online and find all kinds of information, a luxury that we may not have in a crisis situation, either because we're not near a computer or or maybe because the grid is down or the internet is down or who knows what we may not have access to that information and i think that's where you're coming from also is um having these resources available is very critical very emp proof but they're going you kind of tag along what you said you have to take all everything you read from a critical eye because prepping books especially they tend to be more lay people that read them write them not necessarily super experts they become experts because they've studied it it's their passion but they might be really good at one thing but maybe not another like i've seen books where i really like some of the stuff but then they'll give a medical kit list and i'll be like Ooh, I, don't know if I like that list so take everything with a grain of salt and read the more you can read the more videos you can watch you'll start to see common threads this is a good idea because everyone says it this is not a good idea but um always just remember you know, when you read a book, you got you to think about it critically. Does that make sense? And more importantly, does it make sense for me? Does it make sense for you? Will that work for you? Because what works for you may not work for me and vice versa. So I went through my library and I just want to say I looked for books for beginners, beginner level books. I may have 20 books. But I'm trying to think of the one that is the most good for beginners. So let's talk about food production and storage. I found this great book at Cabela's by a Angela Paskett on food storage. It, it has lots of great advice and lots of um, links and lots of advice. I mean, I got my uh, app for my food storage from this book. Lots of great ideas, talks about pros and cons of a lot of things. So if you're new to building a pantry, this was a good book, you know. Um, another book that I'm, I'm trying to get into gardening, it's not going so well, but I got this book to try to start. In fact, that's how we met. I was asking questions about gardening because you have such a great garden in your backyard there. But this is a mini farming on uh, self-sufficiency in a quarter acre. So I've been enjoying this one so far. I'm not good at gardening like you are, so you could probably critique it better than I could. But um, that's a good one for that. So because eating is important, especially if you like food like I do. So I want to make sure I have some. Medical. 
medical is probably the one that I know the most about being a paramedic and a long time paramedic professor and all that stuff. I've seen a lot of books talk about a lot of stuff and, 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 and enticing people to do a lot of things that they probably shouldn't. First thing that's more important than any book is get training, get training. I, I was watching, I remember watching Doomsday Prepper and some guy was trying to teach himself how to do IVs with no training and was putting it in backwards. That got my attention. Ouch. I think for emergency preparedness, the everyone, if they can, should take the emergency medical responder. That's the lowest level of training that is certified in the emergency medical series. You've got emergency medical responder, you've got EMT, you've got advanced EMT, you've got nurses, and then you've got paramedics. So you have this whole gambit. But the neat thing about emergency medical responder, it's only 48 hours, the course. And you learn things like how to take blood pressure, how to use a stethoscope, listen to things, how to do bandage, bleeding control, how to put people on a stretcher or a backboard, you learn how to use oxygen. You learn a lot of fundamental, what we call BLS, basic life support, as well as CPR, AED use, all that stuff. And for a 48-hour course or one week or the equivalent of a three-credit hour course in college, that, that, that's really good knowledge to have. But if you don't take it, I can recommend this book. This is the... AAOS, um, Emergency Medical Responder book by um, Jones and Bartlett Publishing. Um, this has basically all the average stuff. So if you need a reference in that, that's a good. Because once you start getting beyond that, once you start going from the EMR, EMT level to the ALS, you really need the training. It does you no good to know how to see books on suturing if you haven't been trained to suture or books on what meds to give if you haven't had a class in pharmacology. You really need that extra training. So that's my caveat to people in the medical world. I would... but. I, if everyone in the world just took this 48-hour class, if it was mandated in college or high school, the world would be a lot better place. I can tell you that. So, My Nick, where would you easier. go to take, for the average person, where would you go to find one of these classes? You know, you could just search the internet. A lot of community colleges have that course or with the um, EMT. A lot of private people do the courses. I would just start looking, Googling. You could call your local ambulance or fire district to ask if they know who teaches the course. Uh, this is the course that's used a lot also in industry, like a lot of the uh, in, like a lot of plants or factories, they have an emergency response team made up of people. This is the course they get. Moving on to wilderness training survival. Here's the two basic books that I would recommend. This one is actually English, Complete Wilderness Training Book by Hugh McManners. I think he's an XSAS, which is their version of Green Berets um, in Britain. But it's a has great pictures. It explains everything. It's very comprehensive. So you'll show up a camp base of survival, equipment, everything. It's a great book. I, I like to read it at least once a year just because I like the pictures. And then uh, John McCann, he's big known in the prepper world. He made a book on skills you need to stay alive. And the reason I like this book over some other good books like Military Manuals on Survival is he's got a lot of good pictures. But the basics on how to make a fire, how to keep warm, how to use a survival kit, this would be a good starting point as well. And I also pick books that you could get at Barnes & Noble. Almost all these books I got at Barnes & Noble. So I, I still like paper books. So I, I know you can walk in and probably get a good chunk of these or they can order it for you. For preparedness kits, um, Creek Stewart here. He's on the Weather Channel with his survival show sometimes. How to build the perfect bug out bag. I don't know about perfect, but it's a great place to start. Um, it's, it is um, very comprehensive. If you want the ultimate fully stocked bug out bag. This is the book that'll tell you everything. And then from there, you can make it your own. Also, um, how to build little survival kits. Uh, John McCann made this book too. This is how I found out about him. He gives really good details on what survival equipment you need, and you can make a kit small that fits in your pocket all the way to a full backpack. So if you're trying to build preparedness kits, these are two good places, I think, to start on a book from there. Navigation and orienteering. Be expert with map and compass. So this Bjorn Hellstrom, I believe, is the, the inventor of the Silva base plate compass. So I don't think you need a whole book to know how to do orienteering, but it's a great book. I read this in college um, at the Denny's one day because I thought I was going camping in Colorado and I wanted to know how to use a compass. And it is very thorough and it's easy to read. They even have a, a topo map you can practice on. So it hits all the issues. This along with any you know YouTube videos is a good place to start with uh, how to know how to navigate around on a map. Ropes and knots. So this is one I just found the other day, actually. There's a reason why Boy Scouts and firefighters are required to learn and test out on knots, because they're very useful in a pitch. 
I use knots many times in my career to tie ropes to keep people safe or to get down a, a hill or to lift equipment up to the roof of a fire, you name it. What I like about this book is that it's big. The pictures are big. The ropes are different colors. It's real easy to see. Some knot books are really hard to read. This book is pretty good. It, it's easy to read. And I also like it because it gives you what the knot is for. It describes the purpose of the knot. And that's half the battle, knowing what the knot's for. You know, a card may have 20 knots, but if you don't know what that knot's for, it's not going to be useful. So I like that one as a great place to start. And then my final one is financial preparedness, because without this one, you can't get all the stuff for the other stuff. I wish I'd had this book when I was 16. I wouldn't, it would have saved me a lot of pain. Um, Dave Ramsey, and it's just fundamentals of how to not be in debt, how to pay off debt, how to have an emergency fund. That comes in handy. I had to buy new tires three days ago because I went to get an oil change before I went to Kansas. And, oh, they go, your tires are shot. I'm like, really? Well, yep, yeah, they were. But I had to get new tires. So it, without the financial planning, you're never going to have the ability to respond to an emergency. You're never going to have the ability to respond to an unforeseen medical bill or your tires going out or a car repair or your kid needs to play football, all those things. So if you're having trouble getting enough money to even start your kit, and I, I hear that a lot of times, you know, I don't have the money to do that. Then let's start here. So this is a good beginner's book on finance. Once you master these and you can go on to investing and all that other stuff, but just to get out of debt and learn the fundamentals of how to make a budget and how to make an emergency fund. It's great. It even makes this little planner workbook that goes with it. It's pretty good. I have them both and I like that. That's are my books for the beginner. Thoughts on those? I think those are awesome. Those are great books and, and important information. Um, and, and I hadn't thought about the financial side of it, but that is a great point. Um, the, the financial piece is critical often to be able to do the rest of what you need and want to do. And I think when it comes to prepping, we often don't think of the financial aspect, but we are huge into not being in debt. Like we agree with Dave Ramsey. Right. And one of the things, if we can't afford it, we don't buy it. And that's how we were able to raise so many children on such a small income. And like when it comes to the kits and what you need, well, maybe someday you can't go buy it new, but maybe you can go to garage sales or um, thrift stores or something like that. And mm -hmm. it might not be the perfect solution, but it might be the best one that you can afford and better than nothing. Right. So, and that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why we drive really old cars is because we have to live within our budget. And you can always upgrade as things get better. I started yeah. with very cheap, basic camping equipment, military surplus, and I upgraded one thing at a time to ultralight, you know? I think that was a great list, Nick. And some of those books I'm going to need to check out. So yeah. yes, yes, we are. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. And now I'm going to show you, well, we're going to show you cool. uh, the list of our books. But quite frankly, Nick and John are a lot alike. And I think very differently, which you That's see great. in just a minute. Right. Okay. So now this is just a little piece of our prepper library, but we picked out the ones that were most important for us. Now, John's stack is significantly smaller than my stack. Obviously, I am the book nerd, right? So um, we'll start with John and you can share with us what your favorites are and why they're your favorites. Okay. Um, we found this one and, you know, I I thought it was a really good book. I, I think these people are maybe kind of geekish, but uh, The Provident Prepper, um, awesome material, breaks it down in a way that I can understand it and I can take step by step and, and make some progress. And when we wrote it, we actually wrote it with the beginning prepper in mind so that it could be a reference book. So if something happened, I knew right where I needed to go to get that information. So it is a good one, but that's not what this video is about. Okay. EMP attacks and solar storms. This is um, Arthur Bradley, another one of his uh, prepper instruction manual, the humanor handbook, <laughs> all about composting human waste. Light reading. Okay, but when it comes to emergency sanitation, right, and being able to survive, being able to dispose of human waste appropriately is important. So there's the book. Uh, handbook for survival. This one is Alan Brodsky. Uh, nuclear war survival skills, uh, Crescent Kearney. 
You can find this in a couple different versions now. If there is a nuclear event, this definitely has all of the information that you might need to be able to figure out how to build an expedient shelter and how to stay safe from radiation. And so that is something that I think is really good to have in your library. Okay, and then disaster preparedness for the family. Again, this is an Arthur Bradley book. Some really good information in here. And then we have this uh, civil defense manual. This is some information that was put together locally and just has a lot of really good information on a lot of topics. And a lot of times that's what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need to get a good size binder and start putting information in it that you come across that you think is important that you're going to want to remember. So building your own binders, that's a great plan. Just make sure you yeah. keep it organized. And that's, that's <laughs> my little short and stack. that's the extended there's, hit. There's other books, but uh, these are kind of the ones that I would go to. Okay, now. Let's talk about my stack. So first of all, I have a lot of cooking books because cooking with food storage um, can be a little bit tricky. I cook a lot from scratch and so I actually use a lot of these books. Cooking with home storage is a good one. Country beans, I'll leave links to, to these books. This is a new fun one that I just got, Feasting on Food Storage, great things in that book. I have a book on dehydrating foods. Now this is one that I picked up at a, like a garage sale or something. And it is one of my favorite. It's called the Gardener's Community Cookbook, but the difference is it's a collection of recipes from a bunch of different gardeners. So they use a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables that you're growing and like things that there aren't a lot of recipes out there for, like lemon balm. What kind of recipes do you use lemon balm in? This is a great one that I got recently. It's the only beginner freeze drying book you'll ever need. And there is not a lot of really good books out there on freeze drying. They're starting to get some on the market, but this one is amazing. So it helps me be able to understand how to freeze dry correctly so that my food will last for a long time. And then this is a treasure. It's called Cooking from My Pantry. You can't buy it. It's a compilation of food storage recipes from a bunch of different women in the church. So one of the things that I would do is I would look for local community cookbooks. Like when you go to um, a thrift store, a lot of times there'll be groups that have put to, whether it's a school or a church, um, they'll put together these little community cookbooks and there are treasures in them. My next category is medical. Now for this, it's important that you find the right reference books for you. But this is a really good one. It's called Herbal First Aid and Healthcare by Kyle Christensen. And so it's got a lot of, if you don't have access to regular meds, um, you have a lot of herbal remedies that you can use. And so that one's good. Um, I do homeopathy, so I've got that reference. I've got several of these big honkin' books that I picked up at either garage sales or thrift stores because they're super expensive for me to buy new, but it's, it has illustrations and pictures and helps you to understand and diagnose what's going on. Um, and so I think a medical reference book is a must in every prepper library. Um, this is a gift from somebody that I love and she gave it to me. It's the Native American's Herbalist Guide. Again, being able to take care of yourself and help yourself you be healthy when hard times happen. Another one that I love is Beyond Wheat and Weeds by Claudia Orgel. And then Armageddon Medicine by Cynthia Kolker. This is a fantastic book about like end of the world kind of medicine. Those are all books that I think are important. Um, and we have more than that, like Jonathan said, I'm kind of a geek, but those are some of the ones that I think basically we need those basic reference books. Now, this one, my friend Jersey gave to me and I never would have picked it up on my own, but it's called Whittling in the Wild. And it, it shows you how to make all kinds of different things out of sticks, right, and whittling. Things like bows and arrows and a slingshot and things that you could use to, to get your own food if you needed to. So some of this basic stuff, those kinds of books are really important too. This one is probably one of my new favorites. This is the Homesteader's Herbal Companion and she is amazing. The book has all kinds of herbal recipes. Um, talks about, you know, the plants and how to grow them but it's really easy to grow herbs in your backyard because they'll grow like weeds, but you might have them, but you don't understand what to do with them. And like some of her soap and salve recipes in here are fantastic. An indoor gardening book. 
tells you how to handle the problems that occur indoors in your garden because you may have to grow your food indoors. It might not be safe or the weather might not be okay to grow outdoors. Um, the Living Soil Handbook, fantastic resource to help you understand how to build your soil so that you can grow because we may have to be growing all of our own food, right? And soil is the very basics to it and you don't have to have outside inputs if you can build that soil. I'm a huge fan of the Jadam gardening methods. It's all about organic gardening using very little input, very inexpensive resources to be able to produce a lot of food. This one, super good. No-till organic farm. And it, it just teaches you how to grow fruits and vegetables organically without a lot of input. One of my favorite all-time books is Gia's Garden. He, Toby Hemingway, it was amazing and he has recent, or he has passed, but you can tell I, I use this book all the time. It's about being able to grow using a method called permaculture sustainably on, in your own backyard, in small spaces, and how to kind of create your own like food forest type system in a small place just absolutely fantastic this is where i got started with my permaculture journey a book on propagating plants because you never know and i can't remember how to do it all and then saving seeds every seed is a little bit different it's not like you can just take the seeds and save them some of them you have to do things differently so that um, you will get a plant that's true to the parent so this book it's a great one seed to seed and um, it's a great resource so that's my huge pile of books. And it's not that you have to have these exact books. No. But ones that are like it. Yeah, right? reach out to whatever appeals to you, what feels right to you, what is important to you. And, and understand that there's also geeks like us that have a whole bunch of resources. Reach out within your community and see who has books on different things that you're interested in. And I will leave links to some of these books that are available for purchase, but remember that if you're on a budget, go to a thrift store. Check out the books at garage sales that people are getting rid of. I know that our local library has sales every once in a while of books that they have too many of, and it's a way to fund the library. And so if you do that, you can build your library uh, for pennies on the dollar and still have that fabulous resource in your hand when the internet's down and when suddenly your life depends on your ability to get back to the basics, you've got a wealth of knowledge. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Nick. Nick Miller, he's like so amazing. And um, I encourage you to check out some of the books that he has recommended. I'm thinking about taking that course. 48 hours, hmm, can I do it? Should I do it? The more knowledge we have, the better off we're going to be because when it all comes down to it, it's what we know that's going to be able to help us get by. Right, right. right. Now for the question of the day. What written resources do you have? Books, other resources that you can share with us and others? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.